Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from the Overclocker magazine and today I'm here to talk to you about the Asus WS Pro TRX50 Sage Wi-Fi motherboard. I know it's a mouthful, but it is a server motherboard or a workstation motherboard rather. So what is the first thing you want to know about this board? Well, it's always price. So what are we talking about? We're talking 899 US dollars from Amazon or the Asus store or we're talking 1093 US dollars including duties and shipping if you want to bring it into SA. What is the local price? Well, I actually have no idea because while it is on local retailers websites, there isn't a price attached to it right now. So what are you getting for all of your spend? Well, you get quite a lot of motherboard. In fact, I would say this is probably the most complete trx50 motherboard there is on the market today and of course it does have the price to match that so let's just start with power so this is a 36 power stage motherboard and what does all of that equal to well it equals to a lot of power so basically you can draw as much power as necessary for the cpus that this motherboard supports so how is this all powered unlike any other trx50 motherboard this one allows you to plug two PSUs directly onto the motherboard. So you have two ATX 24 pin connectors. You have four EPS 12 volt connectors for the CPU. Now you don't have to use all four. However, in addition to that, there's actually two PCI Express connectors for the motherboard. One is eight pin and the other one is six pin. In the documentation, Asus says that the two PCI Express connectors are for multiple graphics cards, which is understandable. However, on the board that I got, there's actually a sticker that tells you that for any sort of operation, regardless of what VGAs you have installed on the motherboard, you need to plug in the PCI Express power connectors. Just be aware that you need a beefy PSU for this. I don't expect you'll be able to run Threadripper with anything less than even 1000 watt PSU and AMD themselves say they recommend 1600 watt PSUs. I personally used the Cooler Master V1300 Platinum for this and it was more than enough. With that said, what are you getting on the motherboard itself in terms of PCI Express connectivity as well? Because multiple lanes on this platform is a big deal. So you're going to get five PCI Express slots and the configuration is as follows. So two of them are Gen 5 X16 in connectivity and then you get one more that's Gen 5 but that one is X8 only. And then you get another PCI Express Gen 4 that's X16. And then you get the last one is X4, but also PCI Express Gen 4. And in terms of M.2 connectivity, you're going to get two Gen 5 X4 slots or sockets rather. And then you're going to get one that is Gen 4 X4. What else are you getting on this motherboard in terms of storage and whatnot? Well, you get four SATA ports and you get a slim SAS as well. I've never seen a slim SAS drive, so it's not for me, but those people who have such drives will know exactly what to do with it. And I'm sure they'll appreciate this. Another thing that is worth noting on this motherboard, which is perhaps a contradiction to what you would think that this motherboard is for, is actually that it has truly an LN2 mode and other OC switches. So when it comes to overclocking, this is going to be your go-to motherboard. And in fact, right now, as we speak, every single thread ripper performance record on HWBot is on the Sage motherboard. So talking about DRAM overclocking as well, or support rather, on the QVL of this motherboard, it's stated that this board supports up to DDR5-8000. And those kits are from V-Color, I believe. I don't know how that works, but I have no reason to doubt it. Personally, as I said to you earlier, I was able to get to DDR5-7200. And in fact, I did all the overclocking results that you see or you will see shortly at DDR5 7200 in combination with PBO. I think this is probably the best time to get to the benchmarks as well so that you can appreciate the performance differences that I got from overclocking and when we are back I'll tell you further about the motherboard and my general impressions in the time I've had with the Sage board. Lego. As usual first up we have IDA64 memory bandwidth. D45200 operation is impressive of course, but then again so it's DDR5-7200, delivering up to 209 gigabytes a second in read performance, and overall gain in bandwidth is an impressive 43% from a roughly 35% increase in frequency. Next up is latency, again a staggering reduction due to PBO and DDR5-7200 operation, with tuning it should be possible to lower it even further. 
CPU-Z is a quick benchmark and here it shows expected scaling with the OC settings gaining over 2000 points in the multi-core test. Geekbench 6 gains tremendously from PBO tuning. The multi-core score is impressive but the single core score even more so at over 3100 points as high or higher than some high-end Ryzen 7000 desktop CPUs. 3 Mark scaled accordingly, but for some reason, the max thread results are significantly lower than they were on a competing board, and I'm not sure really why that's the case. However, there is still some scaling with PBO tuning and DRAM overclocking. Handbrake seems to gain a lot from DRAM overclocking and PBO combination, managing to get under 130 seconds for the render. I've had it as low as 124 seconds, but that's with a much higher F-clock. Cinebench R23 and 2024 are up next. 2024 especially gains a lot from PBO tuning and memory overclocking. A 600 point increase in this benchmark is no joke. Excellent performance from tuning for sure. V-Ray 5 is rather consistent and 95,000 points is what I've witnessed on other motherboards as well when using PBO tuning, even though the memory speeds used on those motherboards was a bit lower. Impressive performance both at stock and when overclocked. Power draw was even more impressive with the newer 0607 BIOS than before. Just 133 watts while gaming, which is perhaps why the average temperature during said gaming was an incredible 44 degrees Celsius. Oddly enough, in the same game, performance didn't go up from DDR5 6400 and is almost identical at DDR5 7200. So talking about DRAM overclocking, a number of RDM kits on the market do not have a heatsink, much like the Kingston Renegade Pro set that I was using. As such, you must be mindful of the DRAM voltages, especially since we are dealing with DDR5, which is very much heat sensitive. Because of the layout of the TRX50 boards, Operating temperatures without a fan can be as high as 57 degrees on some DIMMs. A fan over the DRAM can reduce that drastically by almost 20 degrees in some instances. Okay, so you've seen the performance, you know how the motherboard functions and so forth. However, what do I think of this motherboard in general? Well, it's a quality board. In fact, this is the benchmark for all the TRX50 motherboards, I think, or at least in my opinion. Yes, it has, doesn't have all the features that other boards have, but the thing is, as an overall package, nothing else can match this one. And again, if you want to talk about robustness and reliability and so forth, just the sheer amount of tests that ASUS claims they put this motherboard through just makes it worthwhile, especially for the target demographic that would want this platform and so forth. The one thing that I don't understand is why the UEFI has to look like it's from 2006 or something, uh, particularly because a lot of the functionality that you have on this UEFI is on every other high-end ASUS board, perhaps even ROG motherboard. And there's no reason why they couldn't have implemented some of the beautiful aesthetics that you get on some of the other motherboards on this very one. Why they went with this one that looks like an MS-DOS prompt or something like that. I don't know. Nonetheless, that's a small thing to complain about in what is overall a fantastic experience and actually one that, like I said, is the benchmark for every other TRX50 motherboard that I'm going to use. So with that said, let me know what you guys think of the Sage motherboard from ASUS. Do you think it's worth it in the context of the platform that we are dealing with? And if so, leave your comments below and let me know. That's it for now. Remember to share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. So take care of yourselves and peace.